All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today we're continuing part B with B2, identify and distinguish between stimulus and stimulus class. Now, we are still on these concepts and principles, so these are our building blocks. And just because they're more rudimentary or maybe easier concepts doesn't mean you need to skip these concepts. These are all the foundations what we're going to talk about in the videos moving forward. So don't skip the easier videos because you think you know these already or don't have to study them. You have to know everything on the task list for your exam. Get the foundations right and everything else becomes easier. So we're going to cover stimulus and stimulus class. We're going to break them down as easy as possible to what we think you need to know for your exam. As always, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Please like and subscribe. We put out three BCBA videos a week. We also have RBT content as well. Check out our website, behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. So let's start here. As behavior analysts, we concern ourselves with environmental events and how they influence behavior. It's essentially what we're looking at. We have an antecedent stimulus, an antecedent environmental event. It's going to evoke a response. Then we're going to have a consequence environmental event that's going to influence that behavior in the future. So we're going to be evoking behavior and changing behavior in the future. And that's what we're looking for. What and how do these environmental events affect our behavior? When we think about stimuli and stimulus, remember stimuli is the plural form of stimulus. Stimuli are those environmental events that influence our behavior. Think about our contingency. A, B, C, antecedent behavior consequence, that's technically just says stimulus, response, stimulus. So we're looking at the environmental change on the antecedent level and the environmental change on the consequence level. Those are our stimuli. Then we have these stimuli that influence behavior well, we can have multiple stimuli that evoke the same behavior or change the behavior in the same way, and we take those and we make classes, and we call those stimulus classes. And those stimulus classes are groups of stimuli that share features or function. So what is a stimulus exactly? It's a change in the environment. You hear a noise outside, your air condition turns on, it gets colder, you stub your toe, you turn your car on, any change in the environment is a stimulus. And as an analyst, you're always observing and taking note of all these different changes that are happening constantly in our client's environment. Those changes evoke a functional reaction. So if we have an antecedent stimulus, that is going to evoke some sort of reaction out of us, out of our client, out of our client's parents. It might be a public event, something we can observe. It might be a private event, something you think. But that stimulus, that antecedent stimulus, is going to evoke some sort of reaction. Then, once that reaction occurs, we're going to have a consequence following that response. And that consequence stimulus is going to influence if that response continues in the future or not. Now, we want to examine stimuli that are observable, specific, and measurable. So something like the wind blowing, that's going to be a little tough to observe and measure. Is it a stimulus? Of course. Can it influence behavior? Of course. All stimuli can influence behavior. But when you're identifying those antecedent and consequences, be specific and consistent. You want to give something to your technicians and to your stakeholders that they can reliably look at and see, okay, this was the antecedent stimulus that evoked it. This was the consequence stimulus that reinforced or punished it or whatever it may be. So a couple more examples. A traffic light turns yellow. That's a change. And you slow down. That's what it evoked. You smell pizza. That's the change. You start looking for a restaurant. A stimulus is just a change in the environment. Now let's get into a stimulus class. It's a group of stimuli that share common features and or serve the same function. So these are Stimuli, one, two, three, four, however many that are going to share common features or serve the same function. 
So when we look at stimulus classes and grouping stimuli together, we're focusing on the relationship between the stimuli and their impact on behavior. Why might that be important? Well, if you've got five stimuli that all belong to the same class and all influence behavior in the same way, then we're going to want to work in the presence of all of those stimuli. Because if we change behavior in the presence of just one of those five stimuli, we still have to worry about the other four and their influence on the behavior. So we wanna know what in the environment causes all these behaviors. A pretty easy example is if you have a young child who cries a lot. Well, if there are multiple things in the environment that lead to crying, we're gonna have to work on that behavior in the presence of all those stimuli, and that's a stimulus class. So the stimuli can vary, but they're going to evoke the same response. And there are several types of stimulus classes that we're about to talk about. So for example, you have a red light, a stop sign, and someone holding their hand up, they all evoke the response of stopping. They don't necessarily look the same, but they all lead to the same response. Now, what are a type of stimulus classes? Well, first you have your formal stimulus class, which is just how they look, the topography. And if it's a formal stimulus class, then the stimuli look and sound alike. So for example, blue objects all evoke blue because they share that characteristic. Animals with tails, they have a similar characteristic. So if that's the target aspect of that animal, then that's going to be a formal stimulus class because they all share tails. When you have a functional stimulus class, they all affect behavior the same way. So all types of music that make you dance. Temporal, when the stimulus occur occurs in relation to the behavior. In other words, is it an antecedent or a consequence stimulus? And then an arbitrary, stimuli that do not resemble each other. So the previous example of the red light and the stop sign and the hand, those aren't necessarily formal together. They're kind of arbitrary, but they're still evoking the same response. And a Kit Kat bar and a Dr. Pepper are going to evoke the same response that those contain sugar. Now, not all stimuli classes are going to have all of these characteristics. For example, physical and formal is very different than arbitrary. So this is getting much more specific, but when you're in your exam and you maybe get a question about types of stimulus classes, these are what you're gonna to wanna to focus on. So key takeaways, a stimulus is a specific object or event that influences behavior. That can be an antecedent. It can be a consequence. It's a change in the environment. A stimulus class, the group of stimuli that share common features or serve the same function. So we just went over our four different types of stimulus classes. And understanding the distinctions between different stimuli helps us be precise when, we're, when, when we are manipulating environmental variables. That's what we're doing. We're changing the environment. We're manipulating the environment. And in order to know what to change, we need to know what is actually influencing behavior. Thanks for watching. That is B2, Stimulus and Stimulus Class, where you're going to continue putting out these videos at least once a week. We're trying to up that so we can get them out quicker for all you preparing for your exam in the coming months. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard. Study hard. See you soon.